Welcome back to the channel. Today I would like to discuss trial and tribulation for believers. Suffering. Now, as believers, should we suffer? We have accepted Christ as our Savior. God promises to protect us and love us and keep us. Should we suffer trouble? Well, God says we should. In fact, he says that's a part of our salvation. It's a, a tool that he uses to, um, to sanctify us and make us different from others, to grow our faith. So faith and refining, they're bound together. They exist as one. However, they will also cease as one. Now, what does refining mean? Well, the Bible uses an example of the way God treats his children. He treats us like gold. Now, gold has impurities in it. And so gold is put into a very hot furnace and the impurities are burned off so that only the only thing left is the lustrous gold and God says that's what he does with us he puts us through the fire of tribulation so that the impurities within us with within us will be burned off and we will not have to go through the fire of condemnation eternally better to have the fire now than have the fire later because they are different fires folks the the lost person has no faith therefore no refining will occur for them trouble for the lost person is simply the result of committing sin the believers faith however is refined through trial and tribulation James the book of James in the Bible tells us that testing stretches our faith to produce patience and eventually perfection, which is another way of saying to be like Christ. Furthermore, testing will end when our faith is no longer necessary. God keeps believers through faith until our salvation is complete, and then Faith is no longer needed because we receive the fullness of our inheritance. Now, Christ is our King. He is our Master, and we are no better than Him. We're not above Him, and He suffered. He suffered terribly. He suffered during His three-year ministry. He suffered emotionally. He suffered physically, and He suffered spiritually, and perhaps the worst of it all was when he was hanging on that cross and if we look back at Jesus's life when he talked about God he called him his heavenly father every time when he when he prayed to him he called him father when he taught uh, others about him he called him heavenly father but on that cross in the moment that he took on our sin and guilt and shame that instant God looked away from him he turned his back on Christ their bond was severed and that was part of the punishment of sin for sin that was part of Jesus taking our place instead of us being eternally separated Jesus was momentarily separated from God and then he was uh, risen, he rose from the dead, he was given his new body by the Father, but for that moment, that brief moment, he was separated from God. And he, as a human being, was really not prepared for that. How could he? He had never known separation in his entire eternal existence. And when he cried out on that cross, he cried out, not my father. He cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That was because he, he was always a human. He was fully human. But in that instance, he was the most human. He was exactly, he was you and I. He felt what we would have felt eternally. 
And that's why we should love him so much and serve him and, and be obedient to him because of what he did. God himself was cut off from God. There's no way to fully understand that, but we know that was indeed suffering. So God says we are to suffer because Jesus suffered and he has a purpose in it. Now I'm going to go through four points and we'll talk about why we suffer as believers. Try, uh, point number one, trials and afflictions are useful to purge us from our tendency to sin. So the book of Romans tells us not to be conformed to the world. The book of James tells us that those who embrace the ways and conform to the world are enemies of God. So we don't want to be enemies of God. Trials serve to keep us from becoming comfortable and carefree in the world comfortable uh, and satisfied in the world's ways and means leads us away from depending on God. So God wants us to learn to depend on Him, not on our own strengths and not on the world. If we're allowed to become lovers of the world, then we will be condemned with them. Condemned means judgment, eternal banishment, eternal prison. If we are chastened or corrected as children, when we begin to uh, get intimate with the ways of the world, we will not be condemned with the world. We cannot improve our nature, but God can, and He uses suffering. The book of Hebrews in the Bible tells us that God tests us. The, the, many of the authors of the New Testament tell us this. James says it, Paul says it, Peter says it. God tests us. Now. Let's compare that with the world's method of self-improvement. The world's method of self-improvement is based on psychology. That is, learn to love yourself, educate yourself, learn techniques of psychological control. The, the, these techniques, the, the world's methods of improving mankind, center on the belief that people are naturally good. The world thinks that everybody is just stupid, and if they could become smarter, then they would be better. They believe we're naturally good, and we can be taught and educated and reasoned with to bring about world harmony and peace and elevate the human race. In truth, the only way to overcome our sin nature is to accept ourselves the way God sees us, naturally unrighteous, prone to transgression and unable to overcome our rebellious nature without God's intervention. Point number two, trials and afflictions also test how genuine and durable the professor's uh, faith really is. Now God tests us to show whether or not we are true believers in Christ, whether, whether we actually embrace Christ without uh, uh, and willing to give up everything. Let's, let's look at an example uh, like employment. So um, in, in all of the jobs really that I've ever had, uh, employers hold a new worker on a probationary status while the employer determines whether um, the worker is worthy to be accepted into the body of workers and receive the, the rights and privileges. So it's the same with God as he tests the faith of one who professes Christ. So not everyone that professes possesses. Testing is not for God to determine a professor's sincerity as if God didn't already know, but testing is for the professor so that he may see how uh, sincere, how strong or weak his faith truly is. We should always be taking inventory of our faith to determine if we are following Christ obediently or if our professed faith is really a profession only and indeed a dead faith. A dead faith? That's not real faith, folks. A dead faith means we're going to be exiled from God. Many are called, few are chosen. That's what the Bible says. Now this is how we judge ourselves and we may find ourselves in need of deep prayer with God to confirm our true sincerity in surrendering to Christ and accepting his new nature 
the new nature that he gives us. Jesus knew from the beginning who of his disciples did not believe in him and who would betray him. I mean, he, he called every one of them specifically, went out, hand-selected them, even Judas. But he knew Judas um, was not his. He knew that from the beginning. So it was never a surprise when Jesus betrayed him. It was part of God's plan. That's the way it worked out. Christ actually called Judas, and Judas did his part in, in the uh, plan of salvation. He, um, he um, uh, betrayed Christ. So it is with all disciples of Christ. Those professors who are not true believers will taste the goodness of the Holy Spirit. They will get the calling, the conviction to, to come to Christ. They'll taste, taste is the word, the goodness of the Holy Spirit. They're called, but they will stop short of eating the body and the blood of Christ. They will not give up everything. They will refuse to sacrifice all for Christ, and they will not be chosen for the kingdom. Point number three, trials and afflictions result in praise, glory, and honor when Christ is revealed. Testing has another purpose. God is doing a lovely thing for us. He is purifying us to make us prepared for his heavenly kingdom. We're being prepared to live in his kingdom. Another way to look at it, at it is God is developing in us Christ-likeness or Christian character. This is a necessary part of salvation, and to reject tribulation and trouble is to reject Christian character development, which is to reject Christ. The person who professes faith and trust in Christ must recognize that he is nothing, not sufficient to do good works, not adequate to claim righteousness, and we never will be. The only thing that makes us able to walk obediently before God and able to expect eternal life, that, that means to make us adequate for citizenship in the kingdom of God, the only thing is to let Christ live his life through us. And the only way to surrender ourselves fully to Christ is to endure testing, trial, and tribulation, which is designed to remove our dependence on ourselves and the world and put our dependence on Christ. If we truly embrace Christ, if we truly surrender ourselves, then we're going to depend on Christ. He is going to become everything for us. There are shortcuts that lead to dead ends, okay? Even in the Christian world, I'm talking about shortcuts that lead to dead ends. How about self-help books by religious authors? Courses and classes taught by religious teachers? Programs designed to provide spiritual growth? They're all examples. We are to depend on God's word, on God's word, on prayer, to, to um, develop a stronger relationship with Christ and to draw on the power of God. Folks, yeah, yeah, go to church, um, uh, listen to the sermons, go to Sunday school, get into the Bible, and, and make Christian fellowship a part of your life. That is absolutely essential for a healthy Christian, but don't rely on some quick fix like reading a self-help book. Maybe buy yourself a, a uh, um, uh, one or two um, books to help you understand uh, uh, books of the Bible, like a commentary on the book of James or the book of Peter. That's fine because they just um, help amplify what the Bible is saying, but don't do anything in lieu, in place of scripture study and prayer, okay? Now, the only way to eternal life is narrow, and the path is rocky with stones of tribulation, testing, and adversity before entering the narrow gate. Many seek the easy way to God, king, God's kingdom because doing something is much less costly and much easier than surrendering ourselves to becoming something different. 
we have derived our glory from Christ and we shall glorify him when he returns. We should dwell often on this thought for it's the way to endure contentious opinions and mockery as well as false witnesses and dishonor that we are subject to by the enemies of God. Cheerfully pass through these fires because we are joint heirs with Christ and we shall one day be treated as such. The world treats us terrible now, makes fun of us, ostracizes us, black black um, lists us and, and hurts us in all kinds of ways. But one day we're going to inherit the uh, the earth and we are joint heirs with Christ. Number four, God tests our souls to manifest the hardness and softness of them. We do not know our own hearts. There is evil in our hearts that we're not aware of, nor even suspect. The heart of man is deceitful above all things. That's what the Bible says. And because it's so deceitful, we cannot know for certain what we will do in moments of trial and tribulation. However, God knows what's in our hearts and he puts us in a position to make decisions. He forces us to make decisions to reveal what's there. God will never allow himself to be portrayed as unfair or unjust. And considering this, we should be aware that he causes us to reveal what's truly in our hearts as evidence for his justice, whether that justice serves to condemn us or to bless us. Well, thank you for um, watching this video. I hope it helps you. Remember, we can endure the hardships in this world. We can endure people who hate us for who we are because Christ is coming back for us. And when he reveals what he truly is, what his, his glory, his shining brightness, we're going to be just like him. Think about that. Come back and watch the next video.